today. Round kicked five goals for the Swans and Lockett kicked six for the Saints. David Mackay and also Barry Round in just a moment. Firstly, the Swan. Thanks very much, Tim. Well, uh, the Sydney Swans got off to an excellent start today, kicking eight goals to two in the first quarter. And from then on, it really looked, uh, looked like it was a lay-down misere. There were at times some spirited fight backs by St Kilda, but uh, really the Swans always seemed to have the answer to their, uh, to their play. The only thing that uh, the Sydney Swans would have to worry about a little bit, I think, is a late, late uh, quarter fade-out fade that they have. Uh, really, nearly every quarter today, they faded out late in the quarter and let the uh, Saints back into the game. But, uh, you know, really on today's performance, winning their first game in Melbourne for quite a long time was a credi creditable performance. The highlights of today's uh, game were certainly the five goals by Barry Round, marked beautifully at, uh, at full forward and, uh, and kicked accurately. But probably for the Saints, uh, they would have been a lot worse off today had it not been for the great play of Sharon and Lockett. Tony Lockett, a young player with a, an excellent future, took uh, some beautiful marks today and some of his accurate kicking for goal was, uh, was a delight to watch. But uh, really, I think probably the Saints have um, recruited the wrong sort of players and uh, the play of uh, Windbanks and Peary today certainly wouldn't be heartening and I think some of the other players that they've recruited are not the, not the type of players that are going to get the Saints further up the ladder. The Sydney Swans, on the other hand, they look as if they could go on from here but uh, they've certainly got a hard one next week so perhaps uh, that'll be the telling point for them. Travis Pay has told us last night on the footy show that the Saints expected to win eight to ten games. Can you see them winning any? I can't really see them winning any games uh, any more than uh, three or four this year to be quite honest Tim. As I said, I think they recruited the wrong sort of players and uh, really for the, the players like Narkel and Cronin they would have been much better if they had gone out and bought one big key position player than two smaller players. Was Rhys Jones not the Swans key forward today? No he wasn't, Barry was the, uh, the key forward today, Rhys Jones tried hard, they, he started at full forward, um, went out to centre half forward for a while and even was ruck roving for a while but uh, couldn't get into the game like he's done in the last couple of weeks. Well Barry, uh, what's this business of playing a key forward role, are you getting a bit old to be running on the ball? Yes, I, uh, I did mention in the papers last year that it'd be uh, nice to have a few easy games up the forward line, and someone must have took it serious. I think. It's that immaculate kicking of yours, Barry, is it? Uh, yes, mm. yeah, law of averages. I think, Doug, that's what I work on. Is Barry, it a sign of things to come, or uh, was it just a one-off manoeuvre? No, this year I've, I've spent a bit of time on the forward line, and that's mainly due to the uh, the good play of Stephen Talbot. He's carried the brunt of the ruck work all year, even in the practice games, and uh, he's he played well again today. Barry, I was very impressed with uh, young Frangalis today. He uh, showed some excellent marking for him, and he's certainly another foil for the, uh, the forward line. In actual, actual fact, at one stage you had yourself, Reese Jones and Frangalis, which was a three-pronged attack. Yeah, Gary's been great, and uh, no, he just sees the leather and it uh, doesn't help having a Swans jumper on at all. He's, if you get in his way, you get bowled over, and uh, he's a tremendous player, and he, he, can, you know, he can jump so high off the ground. He's got a good pair of hands, and he kicks accurately. He's, he's great. Good feeling to win a game in Melbourne, Barry? Tremendous. We might enjoy the trip back on the plane tonight, I think. I gather you've tried to muster more support down here. Have you found you've had more this year? Oh yes, I think the support's you know always been there. We've you know got the loyal supporters still, and uh, you know with the uh, the Sydney business, it uh, did try a few of them out, I suppose. But you know every 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 game there's always red and white streamers behind uh, at least one goal. Billy Pickin, a welcome addition. Great, yeah. He uh, he felt the pinch a bit today. Maxie Crow's a, a great player, and. Uh, you know, a little bit tall, but Billy always battles on. He, he never plays a shocking game. He either plays ordinary or great. Barry, your new recruits, Hawk and Chilcott. I thought uh, Chilcott in particular today played an excellent game around the forward line. Yes, he, uh, he's a very handy player. He's a, a local Sydney boy. And, uh, you know, we, we are very proud to have him in the side because uh, naturally uh, from that state there, uh, they haven't had the football background that the uh, Victorian players have. But... Uh, in all the practice games, his form's been great too. Barry, you seemed to make a supreme effort last year and then you gradually fell away as the season wore on. Do you think you can sustain it this year? Is there any good reason why you think you might be able to? Yeah, I think we were pretty harshly dealt with injuries last year, Tim, and uh, the lack of depth was very evident when we did cop. You know, I think we had five knee operations in the club last year and uh, you know, this year the, the, uh, the club has recruited and uh, a lot more depth and uh, hopefully we'll have a better run with the injuries. Thanks very much for joining us. It's nice to have the Swans represented because we only see you every second week during the season down here, and good luck. Thanks very much. Well, Geelong emerged as the glamour team with a great win over Carlton at Princes Park. They were much too good in winning by 29 points, 19 goals 12 to 15 goals 7. Jacko kicked six goals for the Cats, Whitcomb kicked three, and for Carlton, Ralph kicked three, as did Corkamilis. Doug Hayward and Jeff Leake were at Princes Park, and Doug... We didn't think they could do it, but how good are these cats?
Well, they were quite magnificent, Tim, and it was quite interesting. Carlton, I thought, started in a very careless, flash and arrogant style. There was too much short passing, they missed easy marks, and I guess in particular it was senior players like Wayne Johnson and Jim Buckley who'd obviously decided that Ralph was going to kick 100 goals by halfway through the season, but Mark Boss had different ideas and completely frustrated that his opponent was a brilliant player and Ralph got his first big lesson in VFL football. I think there'll be some urgent messages going out towards Michael Fitzpatrick too because they were very weak in ruck. Mossop won all day. It meant, it meant then that Neil and Bruns and Greg Williams, a Carlton discard, picked up about 100 possessions between them. And overall, Geelong had supremacy right down the ground. As Honey Bun not there yet? Not there yet, and neither was Justin Madden, Tim, but they were beaten. Uh, Reynoldson was a beautiful player. Um, but the man who I'd like to really pass all the plaudits to, I've not seen him often, despite the fact he's such a cult figure, was Mark Jackson. His statistics will say 6-3. I can think of three that he gave away directly, and it was a magnificent performance. Ken Hunter, the leaper. Whoops, he nod over the top and hurt himself. Picked up in front there, nice view by Yates. Yates will have a long one. Sends it long, looking for Jacko. Whoa, and a good mark. Angle, 45 degrees, only about 15, 20 metres. Six goals. And... Well, you had him at Melbourne once. I don't think any of us really thought that he'd make a go of it this year. What's happened? Well, Tim, he's an astonishing player. I don't know why we wonder why, you know, why we think he won't make a go. When you look at his statistics, he's played, I think, about 54 games now and kicked about 210, or that's roughly, goals. But it's always been the story he's not a team player, and it must be to Hafey's incredible credit if he's made it, because today he really gave away goals. There were three beauties, two to Whitcomb, and one to uh, Yates that were just perfect. And Jacko was so strong. I did ask Michael, who's played against him so often, what is the strength of Jackson? He said, well, I guess mostly it is his own strength. And he was absolutely superb today. He, he was too strong for Duel. He was too strong for everybody put onto him. Well, I gather in unearthing a, a great forward, they've also uh, turned up trumps with a forward come defender. Well, I've never got his first game. I saw Reynoldson play the first 11 minutes of his football and I came back to this program and said, I've seen a future star and he's let me down ever since. But at centre-half back, the rejected forward, Stephen Reynoldson, was an absolutely magnificent player today. He absolutely frustrated McClure, was far too good in talent. Beside him is Mossop. Blackpool right down to that square. Up there, Reynoldson, a beautiful leap. That was a magnificent leap. Yes, well, it's good to see him coming on at long last. What about at the other end of the ground? Is that Carlton defence starting to show signs of cracking and well, ageing? South, South, <laughs> aging. Southby went off early with an injury, uh, but was being beaten. Uh, Duell had great trouble with the strength of Jackson. The best player in the back line uh, certainly was English. McConville was a cap capable player, but they weren't good today. English was the butte runner and the good getter of the ball, but apart from him, it was a pretty depleted back line and they'll be very disappointed. Neil comes out and is outpaced that time by some great speed by English. English follows on brilliant, absolutely brilliant. Left foot took down to Madden and that was wonderful football by Des English. Well, Mike Fitzpatrick has joined us. Uh, you were at Windy Hill, Mike, but are you a bit disappointed, no doubt? Surprised at that result? Uh, a little disappointed, but uh, Geelong, I guess, have troubled us over a couple of years and uh, really the, the reason they haven't beaten us more in the last two or three seasons has been a lack of a good forward. And... Uh, They've clearly made uh, two big changes. They've got, they've got a, a key forward and they're also kicking the ball very directly out of the back line. Doug's intimated uh, from the outset that Carlton might be offering the ABC a, a transfer fee to uh, reacquire your services. Do you well, think... have, they'd have to go to the appeals board, I think. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be a high price on Fitzpatrick. <laughs> but really, Tim, it's more than just Jacko, who I pass full, comment, full credit to, but Peter Johnson, the discard from Melbourne, is just so strong and marking so well. His kicking is still a bit sloppy, but that's made... Peak and Bright, very confident, getting the crumbs off, and it's a very competent forward line all over. Uh, Princess Park seems to suit them. They beat Hawthorne there last year as well as beating Carlton. But uh, around the packs, it was their pace that really overran Carlton today. I thought uh, Scratch and Neil was absolutely wonderful. He just loves to run, and the ball came to the ground, and he runs, and he runs aggressively, and that's the sort of runner you want, of course, and there's a good player, and Reedy played well. Johnson, and away go the Cats. Williams. Unmarked on centre wing is Bruns. Wide open for Geelong, just as it looked as though Carlton were going to kick a goal. Bruns has kicked to the goal square. Jackson and Duell at the back. Goal coming up. Neil. Unbelievable switch in play. Doug, uh, what happened to the uh, famed Mosquito Fleet? Your Mosquito Fleet? Mm. Well, 
you've explained to me why so often Marcou doesn't go on early, uh, but Marcou didn't get on for 40 minutes today. That's 10 minutes into the second term, and of course they, you miss Ashman always. But they weren't there, and even when Marcel came on, he wasn't a great player. The 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 person who nearly got them back into the match was the captain, uh, the dominator. He's a magnificent player. He gave one of those bursts in the second quarter when he got 10 possessions, and he he kicked two enormous kicks, which gave Ralph a chance to goal. But no, they were, they, were, they were all out today and uh, it was a great credit to Geelong. They won and they could have won by more. It was no surprise. It wasn't a fluke in any way. They were, they were beautiful. I'm sorry to see you I crying. Don't like, I don't like the sound of this one bit. Oh, I'm enjoying it myself. It's beautiful. Mm. Who goes long again. Honeybutt and Ralph down there. Ralph again. Plays on. Kicks his third. 15 points for the difference. And the Cats are on top of the ladder, one of only two unbeaten teams. But then again, they did start like this last year. There's a way to go yet. Well, Hawthorne is the other unbeaten team, but only just. They survived a great finish by Melbourne at the MCG to hang on and win by one goal. The major goal kickers, Judge, five for Hawthorne and Curran, four for Melbourne. Kelvin Templeton burst back with eight goals and Peter Tossel kicked four. A one-goal win to the Hawks. Ian Robertson was at the MCG. Well, Doug Hayward is always smiling, but I think that uh, he was on the verge of even a greater smile this evening because the Demons, in the last quarter, hit the front twice. At half-time, you would have thought that it was all over by the shouting. The Hawks were coasting, and Melbourne showed tremendous persistence. In the third quarter, they came out and gave it there a very, very good shot, and they were only 20 points behind at the three-quarter time change. But it was the experience of Hawthorne's Matthews, Tuck and Robertson that eventually got them home. Melbourne at the start of the last quarter, two sensational efforts by Robert Flower, they were inspired. They really grew tall and it looked as though they were a chance. Hawthorne on the other hand, they probably missed Wallace. He was injured early in the game. They didn't get the ball out of the centre anywhere near as quickly as they should have. And Melbourne really persisted well. Barassi would have been reasonably happy with them. I think they showed signs that they can bother other sides and the Hawks obviously have serious thinking to do if they're to go on and defend their 83 title. How did Lester Smith go, the recruit? Well, he was on and off the ground, Tim, a fair bit. He spent a lot of time on the interchange bench. Hawthorne were in trouble with Wallace badly injured and Schwab obviously hurt, and Lester Smith had some patches of play but uh, wasn't very prominent at all. Is Templeton really back? Well, I'm glad you mentioned that because Templeton's had a lot of criticism um, both from press and uh, television and radio. His performance today was magnificent. He kicked eight goals. If his kicking could be more penetrating, he'd be back to 83 or three years ago, the former three years ago. And Melbourne are a really competitive team, or did the Hawks ease up? Well, I think Melbourne fans... I made mention on the radio about where is VFL football going. Well, Melbourne and Hawthorne should be congratulated because their, their effort in the last quarter was terrific. 15 goals and sensational football. OK, thanks, Robbo. Another win to the Hawks. The team they beat last week in the grand final replay, Essendon really rebounded in style against the Pretenders, as it turned out, Collingwood. Essendon won the game at Windy Hill by 63 points after racing away in the second quarter. And as I mentioned earlier, the second quarter is our replay for 6.30. Salmon kicked another eight goals. Tony Shaw kicked four goals for Collingwood. One report from the match, Jim McAllister of Collingwood. Mike Fitzpatrick and Don Hyde were at Windy Hill. And Mike, how did you see the Bombers' big win? Well, it was a good win. Uh... Kevin Sheedy clearly put a lot of thought into the loss against Hawthorne by goal last week. Uh, he selected a smaller side, dropping Walsh, bringing in uh, Elshaw and Clark, and he revamped his back line and started Danaher at centre half back, which turned out to be a master move. Both ideas were successful. Uh, Danaher and Bradbury uh, played particularly well, coming off the uh, half back line, ran the ball out well, and the linking play by playing a smaller side, although Elshaw wasn't effective. Uh, Nagel and Hawker certainly uh, kept them in the game and in fact in the second quarter really took the game away from Collingwood. Collingwood uh, played well for about 10 minutes into the second quarter and then the wheels fell off the trolley when uh, Wes Fellows was injured going for Mark in the uh, Essendon goal square and from there on really uh, unbalanced the Collingwood side they had to bring Cloak away from centre half forward, left their attack with uh, very little muscle and uh, the Woods only had 33 kicks in the quarter. So uh, they really looked a little bit undermanned from there on, and they were unable to, in particular, match the height and strength of Salmon at full forward. Over the day, had three opponents, started with Andrews, as expected, and then McAllister and McCormack, McCormack being the only player who uh, was able to control him in any way at all. Takes the free. 
Kicks beyond half forward. Salmon and Andrews one out. Salmon! Well, Ron Andrews lined up in the 18 and in fact was on Salmon. He was the first opponent to be demolished. And Don, I don't know what anybody's going to do about this giant. Well, Timmy's so tall, he's six feet nine, and uh, Ronnie Andrews is a pretty good uh, and talented player, but he couldn't do anything with him, and he was shifted off him. McAllister was put on him, and he demoralised them, him, and then Peter McCormack. So uh, he's going to be a real problem. One of the things about him is, Tim, that he not only kicks and marks well, but he's a good ground player. He fights hard for the ball. Talking about big men, uh, he's not quite six foot nine, but he's uh, pretty big, and that's uh, Justin Madden. I thought he was the best big man in the game today. Uh, Cloak battled hard, I thought, for Collingwood. Uh, Fellows was missed badly when he, when he went off, but Madden played well for four quarters and dominated the big man duels. In towards uh, Barham, and a good, easy mark taken by Weston, who kicks it back for the Bombers, and on that uh, defensive uh, boundary line is a good mark to Madden. Well, Mike, uh, Essendon have been a bogey team for Carlton for so long now, and that big man strength constantly seems to have been a thorn, and with Salmon, it, it's uh, exaggerated even further, I guess. I think that's right. Uh, it was interesting trying to work out how to counter him. Uh, the man that was most successful would appear to have been McCormack, although you had a feeling after half time the Eston players all decided to just get in the act and kick a few goals themselves. But uh, he's certainly going to be a thorn. I don't know uh, what one can do except possibly in Carlton's case maybe play, uh, play Justin Madden on him. Well, they're not just a team of big men, they've got some uh, useful runners as well. They certainly have and I guess the, uh, the chap that was certainly best man on the ground up to half time was uh, Glenn Hawker who has had his critics in the last couple of seasons, but um, he was right at his best today. And quickly goes on. Neagle as the Dons transfer play beautifully to the other side. Watson, and here's the value of it. Forker, could they have a go at them? And he puts it through. Yes, the Essendon running players were quite magnificent today. And uh, Collingwood fell down badly in this department. There was a, a good young player, a brother of Tony Shaw, who uh, looked promising, Neville Shaw. But his big brother, Tony, is a guy who just never gives in. He kicked four goals for the match, and his tackling and his fierce play uh, is always to the fore, as we see on this occasion. Barham, fine mark. Poor kick. Miles, is it bouncing awkwardly for him? Gets rid of it. Abernethy. Danaher's there with the spoil. Williams in support. Well tackled. Very good tackle by the Collingwood player, Shaw. Well, where does it leave Collingwood, Mike? They uh, went to that game with so much confidence and they've come out of it with a hammering. Well, I think Essendon are a very good side, Tim. Uh, they really did uh, run with real commitment and uh, much more so than last week. They tried to get the ball off very, very quickly. Uh, handballed very quickly and uh, it really made them look a lot more like Hawthorne had looked the week before. Collingwood really, uh, as I said, looked undermanned. They, uh, once fellows went off, they really were gone for big men and uh, their small players really didn't seem to be up, the cl up to the class of the Essendon players. OK, so a great disappointment for the Magpies at Windy Hill. They <coughs> haven't had a good record there in recent times, but they did go out this season to Windy Hill with plenty of confidence. We were assured of that during the week and when I spoke to John Cale in the rooms after the game, he reaffirmed that. They build themselves up and then, uh, you know, whether, you know, we just lack that fierce desire when things go wrong. It, it's confidence and uh, I, I know that uh, at Port Adelaide, if we were six or seven goal down, it didn't matter. We still believed in ourselves and we were aggressive enough to make sure that we got back. And I think that's coming. That's hard to say that today because we don't deserve any credit at all. But uh, that's the thing that we're trying to push and uh, it'll take time, I suppose, to see real players under pressure perform like that. I remember here last year, you finished up within four goals, but you were being thrashed at Same three-quarter story. time. Are you any further down the track then than this no, time last no, year? No, I don't think so. I think we are a better team at this stage uh, than last year. And, uh, you know, the players are closer. Today, we'll make them really respond, and uh, next Saturday should tell its tale. John Cale in the rooms at Windy Hill after Collingwood had been drubbed by 63 points by Essendon. And it's not too good for the Magpies when he's comparing his side unfavourably with Port Adelaide from South Australia. Well, Richmond had its second win of the season. Fitzroy still without a win, a finalist last year, but struggling with lots of injuries, lots of problems at the outset in 84. Richmond by 46 points at VFL Park. Roach kicked seven goals and Jess four for the Tigers. And for Fitzroy, Quinlan and Scott, their big forwards, each kicked five. Dale Waitman, Richmond star, 
Flea is with us, but uh, Doug Bigelow firstly to summarise the match. Well, it was clearly indicated to me that two things emerged from this game, and that was surely the rise back to power as, uh, well, as a force in league football. That was Richmond. I thought it was clearly indicated. And Fitzroy would have plenty of worry. I believe their president had lots of anxiety written all over his face before the game. Well, I think that would be further this evening because it was a very disappointing performance by Fitzroy this afternoon. Very few of the players can hold their head high. A lot emerged from the Richmond effort. I thought it was absolutely superb. 20 players or 18 players almost to a, ma to a man certainly made a notable contribution to a grand uh, display by the Tigers. Jess kept the forward line in workmanlike manner. Roach capped it off with seven goals. Pickering, a delightful player on a half forward flank, was a good player for them. And those two or three fellows that Richmond have gathered, Francis, namely from Fitzroy, always did something with the football, as did Anea, a worthy replacement for Wyler, who's gone back to Western Australia. And the defence, well, well led, I thought, by Greg Strawn, but everybody doing something. It was a commentator's dream, really, because uh, Richmond played so well overall that uh, one couldn't find fault with their effort. Fitzroy, lots of worries, and I think quite a few headaches in front of Robert Walls for the next few weeks. Since Walls has been there, I think the really impressive thing has been their commitment. Uh, is that lacking, Doug? I think so, and uh, possibly Matt Rendell would be missed more than anybody because Lee did as he pleased today, particularly with his field play, although Coleman battled well and got lots of hit-outs, but Lee was the general, he was the field marshal, who did an excellent job for the Tigers. Francis get any uh, special treatment? No special treatment at all, just uh, showing his backside to his opposition for most of the day. And what about the, uh, the lucrative recruit, Walsh? The lucrative recruit, uh, Walsh, showed a stamp of class on the odd occasion. Wasn't one of R Richmond's great players, but uh, <coughs> did enough to uh, gain a place, I think, for the next couple of weeks. Well, good evening now to Dale Waitman, and uh, two wins out of three after a lean year last year, Dale. Things <coughs> looking up? Yes, it certainly is a, a good change, and you know, I enjoy winning like anyone else. And uh, the, the first game against Footscray, we didn't play well, but the last two games were really, really looking good. We hear so much about that mean streak in the, the Richmond club generally. Is it is it really like that when you have a bad year? Yeah, I think, you know, if you've noticed after, like, I remember Tony Jewell after he won the grand final in 80, he only lasted one more year because we had a bad year, so that's the way it is. They're always built on success, and I think it, it will get usually gets results anyway. Where did you get a hold of Michael Pickering? And uh... um, He's a local boy from, I think, the Hawkesburn area. Yeah, he's a beautiful player, moves well, great mark. You know, I... I think he's going to be a really good player of the future. Michael Roach among the goals. He hasn't kicked a lot in recent times. No, mainly because he's probably played uh, up the ground. And also he led well today. That's one of his greatest four days. If he leads, and since we've got the players like, as you said, Francis and Walsh that can deliver the ball to him, you know, we'll, we'll do well. Now you've had a, a rather serious <coughs> illness. You've bounced back. Uh, you're 100%. Yeah, I'm feeling better. You know, I missed most of pre-season and uh, I had a hamstring industry industry. Uh, early in the in the pre-season and uh, I missed most of the practice matches. I've really only trained two weeks for the year, but I'm feeling all right. On, to, on the defence effort today, can you afford to leave Jess out of defence even though he played so well in attack? Well, I think we've got uh, Neil Peart there that's played, played oh, best on the ground, I thought, last week. He struggled a bit with um, Scott's height today, but he battled hard and Strawn, he's a, a good good player. I think we... Uh, what impressed me is our back line, when they're, getting, they're kicking the ball to position much better, like Phil Egan and David Palm and that, so forth. Jeff Dunn, uh, your latest recruit from another club, did he get a run? Uh, only in the last five minutes, so we didn't really see much of him. Yeah. Be your best effort for a couple of years, though, you must oh, be happy. It was magnificent, yeah. The way he, they teamed well and used the ball, and you know, it was magnificent. Dale, Pato settled in well as coach. Yes, yes. He's, You'd be uh, enjoying that? Yeah, it is, you know. I've, uh, you know, I think everyone's you know, got together, you know, he's easily to talk to and uh, get on really well with him. OK, Richmond recording their second win out of three matches and uh, Fitzroy really away to a horror start with three straight losses, the Tigers' big winners today at VFL Park. Well, Footscray recorded its second win for the season and North, which topped the table in the home and away series last year, hasn't had a win in three rounds thus far. A 63-point win to Footscray after trailing by two points at half-time. Six goals to Rickman, another five to Beasley and four to Edmund. And for the losers, Bryant kicked four and Kelly kicked three. And Gareth Andrews at Arden Street, not looking good for the Roos. No, well, certainly, Jim, I, I'd say after today's performance that uh, North Melbourne are really heading towards the bottom of the ladder, at least in the bottom two or three positions. They're just not a shadow of the side that they once were, whereas Footscray, after their sad loss to Geelong out at VFL Park last week, really bounced back 
And they show the difference in football today, and that is that a team with commitment, with youth, with enthusiasm, is really going to perform well. This is the formula that I think Geelong's starting to find, and it's certainly the formula that Footscray's found. There's no doubt that they had more than one forward player today, and I think that made a big difference to them. Rickman is a real goer on the half forward line. They sadly missed Williams last week, and together with Beasley, they're starting to make up the numbers on the forward line. Edmund was also a good performer. And certainly one of the real stars today was Purser as a ruckman, and he proved last year time, time and time again that he's a star of the future. He was an excellent player today, as also was McKenna as a rover. North Melbourne, well, they look now like a jaded old prize fighter. They really are down and out. A lot of their older players are starting to fade out. And the pity for North Melbourne is that some of the younger players who they are really relying on to fill in the gaps I think are just average footballers, and that's sad for North Melbourne in the future. Sounds like they've had one game too many. What about uh, Alan Edwards? You mentioned a number of effective Footscray forwards. Is he an answer to a key post? Well, as long as the other player... He's, he's not a mover, Alan Edwards. I've been an admirer of his talents and his skills, but he's had too many operations, too many injuries. He's a lot slower now, but as long as the players run around him, he can be a good performer for Footscray, and he proved that in the last half today. Keith Gregg. Keith Gregg, well, Keith Gregg was one of North Melbourne's best players today, there's no doubt about that. He's a great footballer, he's a great player, he came back from a tough injury, yet he played on Rickman, Rickman kicked six goals against him. And Keith Gregg, I'm sorry to say, is really into his last season of league football. Just Glenn. a quick one, Gareth, uh, Glenn Denning. Glenn Denning, if they had six Glenn Dennings, they'd be a great side. Anyway. Okay, well, they, they've only got one at the moment, sadly, and uh, they're down in the bottom couple of spots on the ladder. We'll have a look at the ladder just a little bit later on. But now it's replay time, and the action comes from Windy Hill. Down by uh, Madden, the ball out towards uh, Tony Shaw, but picked up by Roger Merritt, gives it across to his rover, Bahagia, met pretty hard by Williams, down to the half-forward line. Darren Williams is there, can't get it, uh, but cleverly knocks it on to Watson. Watson, a long 60-metre kick, is tremendous play. Looked like it had gone through, but uh, touched, obviously, right on the line. It's more like the old Timmy Watson really broke out of the centre in a lovely long kick. Andrews, who got a fingertip to that ball. Phillips is the target. Reigns. Taylor, all met by Bahaja with tremendous courage and strength. He's one of the strong little men in the game. Reigns, good smother by Watson. Miles, back in defence in this quarter after starting an attack. Bradbury, Folds, Salmon and Andrews, Salmon. Three goals to Salmon so far. He's taken three marks. A penalty against Ronnie Andrews, Tim. Well, he's already given away one goal. When he uh, incurred the umpire's displeasure. And the ball was transferred up ground. Salmon's fourth. How do you stop this young man? And the Bombers are getting away. They lead by ten points. Would appear then I'd, you could see Cloak heading down that way, but he was just too slow in getting down there. And uh, Andrews uh, really is struggling. Four goals, and we're only just at the start of the first, the start of the second quarter. So um, Kyle's got a lot to think about. There's a change coming up now. McAllister going back to play on Salmon, and Ronnie Andrews being brought up the ground. And the Essendon supporters, who uh, cheered him for many a day here, now are giving him ironic cheers as he's banished to the forward line. Well, McAllister's certainly made no secret of what he's doing down there.
I think he might just have one more chance. <laughs> Look at that. Well, things hotting up at Windy Hill. And now with a 10-point advantage to the Bombers, play gets underway again in the centre, early in the second quarter. And Fellow's knocking it down, but uh, knocked uh, forward by uh, Danaher, down towards uh, Baker, down towards uh, Vanderhaar, to Williams, as good play, across to Bradbury. Bradbury running into an open goal, and a classic piece of teamwork by the Bombers, the best passage of play of the match so far. Excellent running by Bradbury off the halfback flank, followed that ball uh, right from the back of the square. It was a, a really good piece of play and uh, showed good balance and good judgment. He has a good bounce, knows he's got a bit of space and time, and uses the ball well. Essendon really looking dangerous in the first five minutes of the second quarter. Madden, but well sharked by Reigns. Andrews, the new full forward. Strong stuff. Gets a free kick. Well, you could never doubt Big Ronnie's strength and determination. And he gets a 15-metre penalty. Yes. It's a technical one. That was for Baker walking across in front of Andrews uh, prior to him about to kick. He's normally pretty reliable around goal when given a chance. And that was a badly needed one by the Magpies. Well, certainly the move has paid off immediately. Uh, there's a long way to go, of course. Now yeah, we should see the clip here on the replay. Andrews goes to pick it up. Yes, I think he'd try to tackle him. Uh, that, that's where the hit came. Back at centre bounce. And the Bombers looking good at the moment. Big Madden getting up, but no one getting a decisive hit out. Here's Timmy Watson uh, hitting his straps now and breaking clear again, as he did earlier in the quarter. Down towards Sano again, getting out in front of McAllister. The player who was moved onto him just a few moments ago. And the big fellow, Salmon, who's kicked four goals in the match so far, has an opportunity from 45 metres out near the boundary line to score again. The Bombers have a lead of 10 points at the moment. Six and a half minutes into quarter number two. And uh, young Salmon, who's fast becoming a sensation at Windy Hill, an opportunity to kick goal number five. A cross goal. And out of bounds. Fellow's in trouble. He's come down awkwardly. Scoring chance for the Dons. Merritt. Bahaja. And a ball up. Taylor appealing desperately for the free kick. Checking work then by the Collingwood defence, which is under a lot of pressure. Elchor, a flyer, is offline. And a behind. Fellows looks to be in quite a deal of difficulty. He did come down very heavily, and I think he might be uh, might be coming off. It'd be a big blow to them because he was really their last uh, last man standing. If Salmon continues to give them a lot of trouble, this is Graham Allen kicking off for Collingwood. Nice kick out to the far halfback flank. The target there was uh, Cloak. Collingwood uh, seemingly a little lethargic at the moment as uh, Williams of Essendon gets possession and can't break clear on that halfback line. And it'll be another bounce. Cloak against Merritt. Merritt getting up high, but in uh, doing so, uh, gets across the shoulder of David Cloak. And the big fellow gets the uh, free kick on the halfback line and uh, out to the centre wing. And uh, Miles has it now, and uh, Madden tries to tackle him. It's down to the Collingwood half-forward line, and the mark taken here by Morwood. First touch, I think, for Shane Morwood. He did it well, then. Nice even kick to half forward. Shaw up in front. Tony folds. Danaher 
The hand pass just made him prop a little. Toomey in the way. Quickly off to Neville Shaw. Call in short, but he goes long. Nothing there. Tony Shaw with three big men to beat. Morwood. Support from Tony Shaw. Duckworth. Bursting clear. Not much to uh, look for out on that wing. Throw in. And uh, Tony Russell about to come on the ground to replace Fellows. It doesn't look too good at all. Merritt knocking the ball down. Neville Shaw for Collingwood. Uh, dispossessed. Ball again taken by Glenn Hawker. Gets yet another possession across towards uh, Bahaja. It fumbles at the crucial moment. Collingwood sputtering the ball. And it's uh, holding the man and a free kick going uh, to Collingwood on the half-back line as Fellows uh, comes off the ground. And that's McLean kicking it down to the Collingwood half-forward line, but Essendon well in command at the moment as Carey kicks it back into the centre. Cloak, not able to hold an easy mark, taken here by uh, Bahaja. Bahaja down towards Samuel, he'll mark it easily. Well, McAllister making a valiant attempt to uh, spoil, but uh, he came in far too late. The ball delivered beautifully to Salmon, and he got that the yard or two break on McAllister, and from that point on, the backmen had no chance at all. McAllister a bit unlucky there. Uh, Collingwood appeared to have possession when Cloak dropped to Mark, and of course that left him out of position, and he was unable to get back to Salmon. Ten minutes gone in the uh, second quarter. Salmon has already kicked four. He's about 25 to 30 metres out. He swings it in. <laughs> Only one point. Phillips finds Taylor. Kicks long and almost reaches the centre line, but Essendon with the big man strength. Bradbury, Baker, spearing pass to Merritt. Nice delivery. Salmon dropping back into the square. Here's danger again for Collingwood. Great effort, good spoil. Was well, good spoil by Timmy. That's the sort of thing they uh, they really need, but they've really been able to achieve it. McAllister, the man who's got the unenviable task of trying to curb the brilliance of Paul Salmon, who's already kicked four, putting the ball back into play from the full-back line. Watson getting the front position. Mark Williams, the Collingwood captain, spearing the pass out towards the centre wing, and McLean. McLean held when not in possession, should have got the free kick. The ball back towards Ricky Barron. Opportunity here for Foles. Foles getting it across to Elshaw. Poor kick by Elshaw. Collingwood uh, coming uh, back through Allen. Allen into the centre, taken by Abernathy. Abernathy's kick into the half-forward line of Tony Shaw. Collingwood putting everything in it in an effort to get that ball forward. Ricky Barham's got it again. Out to McLean. Essendon an irrepressible as the ball is over the line again. Twelve minutes down, second quarter. Donnell has just come on to replace Elshaw. Folds, good player for the Dons. Russell, uh, Baker rather, but taken away by Neville Shaw. Toomey, Barham. Russell comes from behind for Collingwood, but didn't look like it as Danaher stood his ground well. And quickly goes on. Neagle as the Dons transfer play beautifully to the other side. Watson, and here's the value of it. Hawker, could have a go at them. And he puts it through. Excellent play, very well set up by Danaher down at the in the back half. You could be forgiven for thinking you were watching Geelong with that one. It uh, went straight across. We've now brought on Clark to replace uh, Baker, I think it is. Yep. Forty-eight to twenty-nine. 13 minutes gone, second quarter. And the Bombers at home at Windy Hill doing it so well at the moment. 
goes uh, Madden. Essendon trying to uh, storm the ball forward, and it'll be bounced again after the scramble developed in the centre, with Abernathy uh, trying to get it. There's big David Cloak coming in, but Madden uh, beats him by hands down, and the uh, ball transferred to Foles, into Salmon again, Salmon over the top, knocks it forward. Williams trying to take advantage of the knock running through, but they're not able to pick it up, and Collingwood defending grimly on the last line of defence. Taylor's free. Beers up for Collingwood, almost grabbed it. Barham now on the other side of the ground. Cloak. Beers again. But under pressure and couldn't kick with purpose. Throw in. Collingwood's half forward flank. Just to the left of the little scoreboard, which shows a 19 point lead to Essendon. As Morwood gets it down. Beers gets the kick forward. Andrews late on the scene from behind Danaher. Essendon free kick. Clark just on the ground. Coming back after injury in the uh, finals last year. It doesn't kick, gives it to Neagle. Neagle's kick now, putting play for the Bombers out to the centre ring. Up over the top. Uh, the ball knocked down to Waynes uh, by uh, David Toomey. And Waynes uh, kicking it into the full forward zone, but the ball is coming back. Over the line. And a throw in on Collingwood's half forward flank. With the Bombers in command, leading um, 48 to 29 at the moment. Taken here by Mike Williams. Uh, Williams uh, gets the ball moving quickly in towards uh, Barham. And a good, easy mark taken by Weston, who kicks it back for the Bombers along that uh, defensive uh, boundary line. And a good mark to Madden. And the Bombers playing with a lot of confidence at the moment and a lot of assuredness as the ball comes in towards the centre. Up is Merritt, the ball taken away by Allen. Allen uh, has to get rid of it quickly, and then Folds comes in. But in the meantime, uh, an infringement. And the free kick will go to Phillips, right in the centre. A little down from centre, towards the Collingwood half-forward line. This is his first kick coming up for the match. Long uh, torpedo punt, good kick. Right into the full forward zone, up high was Morwood. Had he been able to pull that one in, that uh, it maybe would have been the mark of the decade. It would have been handy if he'd missed it altogether, I think. It might have gone right <laughs> through the centre. Short one from Duckworth. Finds Hurd. Uh, Weston, rather. Call up on the wing from Donnell, who's got Toomey bearing down, but stood his ground nicely. Call inside from Hawker. Goes towards him. But, uh, oh... That hurt, Abernethy. Thought it might have been worse than it was. He looks to be OK. Gives the head a shake. Madden up. Bradbury down. And the Bombers out of trouble again. Watson. Couple inside. Vanderhaar and Williams. They're quickly covered. Merritt up at half forward. Salmon comes from behind. Neagle. Well tackled. Penalised. Free kick to Phillips. The uh, second possession uh, by, to Phillips. Collingwood now getting it out to Ricky Barham and Barham across to uh, Graham Allen and uh, Collingwood running well at the moment. Allen's a quick player. He's right down on the half forward line and a high kick by him puts it in towards the full forward zone. More what it was who had to adopt the role of defender then when he was left behind and tried to knock it down. And now it's over the line, only 20 metres out from the Collingwood goal. They're really lacking a focal point, Collingwood, aren't they? They're not getting any drive off centre half forward and continue to break down across the half forward flank. A three goal advantage to the Bombers. De Williams tries to take it out of the air. Andrews is in there, but the uh, Essendon defence uh, handballing. And Reigns uh, tackling hard on Danaher. And the decision is going uh, to Terry Danaher. Who's getting better against, as Mike said, a fairly ineffective looking Collingwood attack. Three against one in Essendon's favour. It was easy for Simon Madden. Hawker, well shepherded by Madden. Towards Merritt. Phillips pushed him in the back. Merritt's been a good player. Clark, beautifully to Watson. 
goes for the sticks. Salmon's there. Not quite. One behind. A 19 point advantage to the Bombers. McAllister kicking the ball back towards centre wing. Phillips taken here by Foles. Good play by Foles into Salmon. The Salmon uh, trying to get into the front position. What a mark! <laughs> Tremendous mark to Salmon. Well, it was certainly a difficult mark. He appeared to have one hand held by a defender and. Uh, I guess he's such a big man, he probably has big hands. It might be two hands for anybody else, but well, uh, his, uh, balance six, is beautiful. Six mark for the match. He's kicked four goals. What are they going to do about him? That's the question. It must be a nightmare to McAllister every time the ball comes down. Salmon right over the top of the ball. A picture of concentration. He's right in front of goal, and there's the kick. And another goal. Five goals to Salmon. The loss of Fellows has been fairly key. It's left them with uh, not many more options to uh, to put onto Salmon. Also, uh, Simon Madden starting to come into the game. Here's that mark. Fantastic. One hand really well held by McAllister, but uh, still able to get the other hand up and kept his eye on the ball, which was the thing that made the difference. And I suppose most people who stand six foot nine have got fairly large hands. That, that's my theory. <laughs> I do think, though, with the loss of Fellows, it's meant not only have they uh, been robbed in the ruck where they did have Madden under control, but it's also meant they've been robbed at centre-half forward. So the Bombers 25 points in front, spearheaded by Salmon, who's giving the Windy Hill fans excitement resembling that of the John Coleman days. Oh, great effort by Neagle. Merritt overran it. Phillips pressured by Vanderhaar and made the error. Out on the full. Bradbury, who's been running up the ground consistently from half back. Salmon will be beset. Bahaja, beautifully done. Vanderhaar. Watson's there, almost. Donnell. Taylor, Barham, nothing to kick to, Carey first there, Tony Shaw in pursuit, Salmon, couldn't get it to Neagle, Williams off the ground, but now Neagle's got it, and here go the Bombers again. Mervyn Neagle has plenty of time to steady and decides to play it down to the half forward line to the running uh, Glenn Hawker who's created havoc on the Collingwood defence today. Beautiful hand pass to Bradbury, running down again from the half-back line. Spears the ball in, trying to get it to Madden. Bradbury getting a, a bit of a knock as he got rid of the ball. And downfield, it's Merritt who will get the penalty kick because of that infringement uh, on Bradbury. So, big Roger, right on the boundary line. And even bigger, Paul Salmon lurking in the goal square. Essendon leading by 25 points. 22 minutes gone, second quarter, short pass to a lead. Beautiful lead, beautiful pass, but Bahaja drops it. And uh, a bit of a respite there for Collingwood as they uh, force the ball away back towards uh, McLean on the halfback line. Essendon, though, irreversible, a high tackle on Timmy Watson. And uh, Watson, who uh, has come right into the game in this quarter, gets the... Uh, Hand pass going to Clark, just on the ground. Clark in towards Salmon again, the back position this time. And over the line it goes. We're seeing elements of panic in the uh, Collingwood back line. A, a couple of loose handballs, the uh, head high tackle on Watson and the kick out of bounds in the full by Phillips. 23 minutes gone. Merritt beautifully to Hawker, who was well tackled and penalised for holding the ball. And Phillips did it well then. He's a big, strong man, good tackler. But uh, he's had his problems today in the person of Roger Merritt. He's done well at centre half forward. Good spoil by Van der Haar. Essendon relentless at the moment. Williams turned out of one tackle but straight into another. 
And the free kick goes to Shane Morwood. Oh, he was off for sure, and the umpire ruled it so. Allen to half forward for the Magpies. Allen's kick now, putting it into the uh, attacking zone for the Magpies, but as Mike indicated earlier, there's no purpose in their attack, no focal point. Watson giving it out to Neagle. He's been a star for the Bombers, and there he goes on the centre wing again. Neagle having his 11th kick for the match, down to the full forward zone, taken hit by Merritt. Merritt giving it back uh, again to Neagle. In towards Salmon. Salmon has Collingwood players all around him, and Donnell puts it through. As often happens when you've got a, a key focal point like Salmon, some of the other players are feeding off him. All the attention on Salmon, and uh, Janelle was able to sneak in for what was a quick but a relatively easy goal. It comes off the back of the pack, and Donnell, as long as he kept control of it, it was always going to be a goal. Centre square infringement goes Essendon's way. Perhaps more panic from the Magpies. Bahaja. Smallest man on the ground. Donnell unopposed, unmanned. And he's very loose, very loose play in the background. I think we're seeing a lot of value also from the Eston forwards uh, to a man are trying to chase the uh, Collingwood backs out. This has meant the ball's coming up very slowly and it's very hard for forwards to make position when the ball's coming up as slowly as it is. Bad miss. But the Bombers doing it almost at will at the moment. 62 plays 30. And it's a big lead. Now Taylor takes the ball from the kickoff by McAllister, gets it up to Phillips, who's coming into the game a little more this quarter. And down to Abernathy, who plays it onto the Collingwood half forward line. But uh, who was there to get it? Bradbury uh, not able to take it. Eventually across to Abernathy from uh, Tony Russell. In towards Ronnie Andrews up too soon. Essendon defenders everywhere. And the ball is taken by Duckworth. And Duckworth coolly across to Danaher. And Essendon looking so good at the moment. And Collingwood in disarray as the ball comes down towards Janelle. Up between two Collingwood players. Phillips. Good handball by the Magpies. And eventually back to Abernathy. There's a chance. Knocked away by uh, Big Madden. And the Dons went on with the job after half-time. They kicked eight goals to five in the third quarter and eventually won the match by 63 points. Salmon kicked another eight goals and Tony 